let's make some storage beside your refrigerator using a caster from a previously recorded video. Because why not? Okay, so this is another video using pallet wood. And I guess you don't have to use pallet wood if you want to go to your local supply store and pay a lot of money for one by fours. So I would utilize something that's free if possible in uh, pallet wood, which is why I did the sizes on this that I, that I have here. Uh, something on this job that you're going to see if you stick around towards the end is I'm going to show you how I incorporate a previously recorded or um, designed, I guess I should, I should say, uh, part and import it into a new one. I made a caster video that you should probably check out and I'll put a link to that in this video. And that caster I'm going to incorporate into this particular build so that I don't have to redraw the caster again makes no sense to waste time like that so anyway what this is is a, a little small storage like a spice rack if you will on casters that you can uh, place in maybe a corner of your say you're in a small apartment or a small place or even at your house there's that extra typically there's some extra four to maybe six inches next to the fridge that's just doing nothing but collecting dust, you can build one of these fairly easy and cheap and have a little spice rack that you can wheel out uh, beside your fridge. Now, I only put two casters on this thing. You probably would have wanted to go with maybe small, four small ones. I just wanted to show you how to incorporate the casters. Um, it is going to be against a wall though, so it may work with the casters as they are on this uh, particular build, but keep that in mind when you're watching this. So anyway, uh, what I'm doing here is building the sides and putting in some holes for future dowel rods. And this is a technique I use typically when I do leather templates, uh, as far as doing uh, pattern on path in lieu of pattern on rectangle. Pattern on path requires an object in Fusion 360 to be able to duplicate these hole pattern. So uh, this is how I chose to do it on this particular build, uh, which is actually how I typically do it when I have holes anywhere. Now that I think about it, uh, wood or leather projects, I think pattern on the path is the far superior way to add these.
whole lot of construction planes as usual. Offset and mid plane are your best friend in Fusion 360. And I'll do a project eventually where I'll do some angled construction planes. Uh, those come in handy a lot as well for say like a back of a chair, like a uh, Adirondack chair or something along those lines. That's when those really come into play. So I am essentially just going to start copying all of these little shelves and the sides that I've already built. And you'll start to see this come together as to what it is, because right now it doesn't look like much. got the shelves where I want it. Now I could do, and I should have probably, uh, instead of trying to line this up by eye, I could have easily just done a point to point to get it perfectly on the corner of the drawing, but it's pretty close. And for this particular project, I simply need not only a render to show a customer, I need uh, to be able to have the proper amount of components printed out on the prints at the end of this build. And I think on this one, I keep saying I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to put these on my website as a free download, these drawings, and start just getting these out there for people to download for free if they're interested in making some of these projects. Because uh, otherwise, they may just sit on my hard drive and do nothing. So why not have someone else be able to use them? Uh, on the very bottom shelf here also, I did add a little backer piece because at the bottom you may have stuff, a lot easier chance of falling off. And the rest of them are just gonna be dowel rods to support bigger bottles and stuff like that you may wanna use this for. And remember, always, as you see there, make sure you put new component. That is a must or you will get that duplicate problem you just saw.
can't say enough about uh, changing through the inspect function the colors of the material so that I can see which one I want to hide and not hide the incorrect one, uh, which is why I changed the color there and put in the first dowel rod. Now to do these dowel rods, there's different ways to do this. I simply chose an easy way and that's just copy paste. So on a PC, just control C, control V, that'll pop up the arrows, arrows you will see here in a minute and you can then do, uh, you can move it uh, the distance can be from point to point and it will perfectly place it in the hole that you want it to go in. Now what I could have done is done the dowel rods all together at uh, one time and like a pattern on rectangle. I just wanted to show you guys a different way of doing this which is what is here. Now there are a lot of holes in this one. I don't know, well, maybe I did actually use all the holes for dowels. I thought I was going to have some extra ones that I was not going to utilize. That way someone could add, which I probably would do, I add extra holes in case someone wants to maybe put dowel rods further up or, or lower for smaller items.
Just wanted to show you how to make a simple knob here. I probably would do more of a handle than a knob that you would see on a, maybe a cabinet drawer. This is just kind of something that uh, is easier, uh, or something not easier, but something I could show you as far as if you want to do a knob, say, on a cabinet. And you can always copy paste these and duplicate these as well. Now, if you design a knob that you really like, you could also do like the caster and have a separate part on file. So when you build cabinets, you can bring over that particular um, cabinet knob. That's another good thing about Fusion 360. Like I, did, I will do with this caster in a minute. You could do one for, say, a knob, and you could bring it in a lot faster to all of your cabinet projects or whatever you choose to use a knob for that will speed up things as well. Okay, so here's the fun part. Uh, you simply go to the top of your screen on the far left and drop down the menu uh, for your projects previous projects. In this case, I'm grabbing the caster and you just right click on it and insert into current project. And there you have it. And you can drag it wherever you want. I again, probably should have done point to point here to make it 100% accurate. But again, I simply need these casters to be printing on the blueprint sheet on the back end so that if I were to give or sell or put these for free on my website, people would know that they would need to also purchase two casters as a reminder. You can go as far as to add in the screws. I can probably show you that on a later video. A Fusion 360 has a built, if you have the premium um, membership for it, that is. I don't think you have it on the free version, but uh, on the premium one, which I have for sure, you can import bolts and screws and everything you could ever want for your project. It's pretty neat, which will also spit out on your back blueprint sheet when you go to print these. So anyway, as I turned this, I noticed that I was off on that first one. I didn't uh, remember to look at the side view. That looks pretty dumb. Easy enough to fix though. Just go right there back to it and just either copy and paste it like I did here or I could have just moved it, but I just deleted the old one. Many ways of doing things in Fusion 360. So the last thing you need to do is just add some color. And I do, this is not an accurate depiction of what I would be making for this customer. I simply wanted something that was a little bit more brighter or flamboyant to put on to YouTube to make the thumbnail pop a little bit more. But anyway, hope you guys liked it. I will continue to make these until there is not a person that is interested or that I can tell 